This broadcast is brought to you by the British Israel Church of God. The Watchman Program, Evangelist and Commentator, Peter Salemi, bringing you the truth about today's world news in the light of Bible prophecy. And greetings, friends. Today we are broadcasting from Guelph, Ontario, and Guelph, Ontario is also known as the Royal City. Now, I don't think many people realize that Guelph had a huge role in fulfilling a major prophecy in the Bible, a prophecy about Joseph and the nations that were to come out of Joseph and the colonization of the tribe of Joseph around the world. Guelph had a major role of colonizing Canada. The headquarters for colonizing Canada was actually here in Guelph, Ontario. Now, I'll give you a little history about Guelph. The current uh, Guelph began as a settlement in the 1820s, and it started by John Galt. Now, John Galt, he was originally from Scotland, and he was the first superintendent of the Canada Company. I'll get into that a little more in more detail after I go through the history of this, but the Canada Company was a company formed by Britain to aid in the colonization of Upper Canada. And it says that he based the headquarters of the Canada Company and his home in Guelph, Ontario. Now, as it goes on, it says here, John Galt, the first superintendent of the, of the Canada Company, was hired to help colonize Upper Canada. He selected Guelph as the headquarters of this British development firm. Galt was a popular Scottish poet and novelist who also designed the town to attract settlers and farmers to the surrounding countryside. And this is what the Canada Company did. They would seek out land to colonize and they would go into Europe and try to attract pioneers, settlers, to colonize uh, many of the open lands that we find up here in Canada. It says uh, Scott was a, uh, Galt was a Scottish poet and novelist who also designed the town to attract settlers and farmers to the surrounding countryside. His design intended the town to resemble a European city center. And that's how the, if you look at the city, this is how it's really uh, designed to be more like a European city because they wanted to attract European colonizers to come to Canada and colonize Canada. He says the initial founding was symbolized by Galt as a felling, as a felling a tree on uh, April the 23rd, 1827. That was St. George Day, the feast day of the patron saint of England. The name Guelph, now this name of Guelph this is the reason why it's called the Royal City. The name Guelph comes from the Italian Guelfo and the Bavarian German Welph. It is a reference to the reigning British monarch at the time of Guelph's founding, which was King George, whose family was from the House of Hanover. A younger branch of the House of Welph, sometimes spelled Guelph with a U or Guelph with a W. The town was named in honor of, the Brit of Britain's royal family the Hanoverans, who were descended from the Guelphs, the ancestral family of King George, the reigning British monarch, thus the nickname, the Royal City. So this name is actually named after the, uh, the British royal family. It goes on to say here, John Galt's role with the Canada Company in populating Upper Canada, the Huron Tract, calling it the most important single attempt at settlement in Canadian history. So this is why we're doing this uh, broadcast here in Guelph because it has a, had a very important role of colonization which fulfilled a major prophecy in the book of Genesis and Deuteronomy as we will show you a little later on in the program. Galt was responsible for finding settlers for the 42,000 acre Halton, Halton block that would become Guelph 
and its townships, but also for the one million acre Huron track that stretched to Godrich, Ontario, which is about, I don't know how many kilometers, 100 kilometers north, uh, west of here. I've been there a couple of times in my life, very, very far away from where we are now. It also says five churches and chapels and a population of 1,240. Most were from England and Scotland with a few from Ireland that founded this great nation, uh, this great uh, city. Now the census, there's about 120,000 people here and 100,000 of those are of white descent of English, Scottish and Irish. Others call themselves Canadian, but obviously when they say Canadian it actually means English. Now, where I'm standing right now, uh, at the end of this says, historically, Guelph's population has been principally British in origin, and it remains that way. Now, where I'm standing now, behind me, is the Basilica of Our Lady Immaculate. It's a Roman Catholic church, and it actually stands at the top of the city of Guelph. This is the... the uh, the highest point in the city and then the whole city runs down from here as we show you in a couple of shots you see the city going downward and this is the top of it now before uh, this church was built here there were two other churches here uh, the first church was called St. Patrick, Patrick's it was a wooden frame church that was here first then, and then that got destroyed and then the second church was called uh, St. Bartholomew's Church. And this was, this began, this was built shortly after St. Patrick's Church was destroyed. And this, that building was completed in 1846. And the inscription on the cornerstone of that church read, To God, the best and greatest, the faithful of Guelph of the Diocese of Toronto have built this new church in honor of the blessed apostle Bartholomew, the first church having been consumed in flames. And then after that church uh, got destroyed, then came this basilica that we see here today. Now, John Galt, what he said about this church, he said in a statement, on this hill would one day rise a church to rival the St. Saint, uh, Peter's in Rome. He wanted this church to rival uh, the Vatican in Rome. Now, we all know about the origins of the Catholic Church and what the Catholic Church really represents in prophecy. But what I'm just showing you here is, is that in the founding and the building of many of these cities in Ontario, Christianity, uh, they're, you know, the way they view Christianity, but Christianity as a whole, in general, the Ten Commandments and the Sermon on the Mount, uh, Christianity meant to these people is that it was it was the center Christianity was the center of the the building of these cities that churches were built and they were very important these churches were very important to the communities because they went to these churches as I mentioned in other uh, programs the churches for them were sanctuaries places of encouragement of spiritual uplifting because these people came here to settle to colonize and they needed strength physically but also spiritually so I just wanted to sh just to sh uh, tell you here that this is the reason why we're doing it in front of this church because it was the center of Guelph and that Christianity meant a lot to the founding peoples of this city now as I mentioned earlier John Galt was the super, first superintendent of the Canada Company. And this had a major role in, this company had a major role in colonizing Upper Canada. And that uh, company actually fulfilled a major prophecy, a major prophecy of the tribe of Joseph, which is Ephraim and Manasseh, Ephraim, being Great Britain and the British people. Now the Canada Company, just to give you a little information here, the Canada Company was a large private chartered British land development company incorporated by a royal charter 
uh, August 19th, 1826, under an act of British Parliament given royal assent on June 27, 1825, to aid in the colonization of a large part of Upper Canada, founded by John Galt, who founded uh, Guelph, who became its first superintendent. The company was successful in populating the area called the Huron Tract, an achievement later called the most important single attempt at settlement in Canadian history. And a little, while, a little later on, it goes on to say that Guelph was the company's headquarters. So this is where the colonization took place. They brought the settlers here, the colonizers, and then uh, they colonized the lands around the city and the city itself, the farmers and the settlers. It says the company surveyed and subdivided the massive Huron tract, built roads, mills, schools, advertised lots for sales to buyers in Europe. The company then assisted in the migration of new settlers, bringing them into, bringing them to the area by means of a boat, which the company also owned on Lake Ontario. Then there was a plaque erected in uh, Huron County. Pioneers of the Huron Track, 1828 to 1928, commemorates the work of the men who developed the Huron Track and the families who lived here, starting in 1828. So. Guelph was the headquarters for the colonization of Canada by mainly British settlers and they colonized uh, Guelph and other places around uh, this city. Uh, Kitchener Waterloo is just to the west of here and it was settled by them and other places around Guelph and it fulfilled a major prophecy of the tribe of Joseph that we will get to, but before we uh, go on to that, I want to offer you this free booklet that you can download free of charge off our website, The United States and the British Commonwealth in Prophecy. You can download off our website, BritishIsrael.ca, free of charge, and an article there that I also wrote called The Dominion of Canada. And it talks about the history of Canada and how Canada was a crown colony of the British Empire along with Australia and New Zealand. It was a crown colony of the British Empire and it fulfilled the prophecies of Ephraim. Download it off our website, BritishIsrael.ca. Take a look at this and I'll be right back. Well, life's been pretty good. Summer home, yacht, vacation when I wanted. Some little kids sure spent a lot of time with that. Too bad they never last. Yeah, a lot of things are like that. The kids are grown now, and hmm, Sammy and I aren't getting any younger. Hmm, is this all there is? You can know the answer to this age-old question. What is the purpose of human life? Download your free copy at BritishIsrael.ca or call or text for a free hard copy at 905-447-4415 or 416-898-7407. All right, get that free literature. All that literature is free of charge off our website, British Israel, down .ca, and of course we will put the links underneath the YouTube player, and you can uh, click the links there, and you can download them there free of charge. You know, it's a shame that Canada doesn't know its history and of course the pride of our power has been broken and now Canada is pretty much conquered and it's conquered not really not by any armies or anything it's conquered by simply stopping uh, by them stopping defending their culture their history and their heritage and so as William D. Gardner, a Canadian writer, says that once a people, especially the leaders, stop defending their own culture, well then Canada, then Canada is pretty much conquered, and that's exactly what is happening. But eventually Canada will be conquered by armies, and those armies will be led by Gog and Magog, which is of course China. And China will come in from the north and attack Canada and the United States of America in the very 
uh, near future. But Guelph, as I mentioned, was the headquarters of the colonization of Upper Canada. Now there's two prophecies in Deuteronomy the 33rd chapter and Genesis the 48th and 49th chapters that talk about Joseph and the blessings of Joseph. And in Deuteronomy 33, 17, it talks, it says this, it says, his glory, talking about Joseph, is like the fruit, uh, the firstling of his bullock, and his horns are like the horns of the unicorn. With them he shall push the peoples together to the ends of the earth, and they are ten thousands of Ephraim and thousands of Manasseh. Talking about Joseph, Ephraim, and Manasseh. Now we know Ephraim has become a great a company, a multitude of many nations, and Manasseh was to emerge as a great single powerful nation. And if you read our booklet, The United States and Britain in Prophecy, you will see that that is the United States and the British Commonwealth of Nations. Manasseh is the United States, Ephraim is Britain and her colonies around the world, and that includes Canada. And here in Guelph was the headquarters for the colonization of Canada. Now notice this prophecy it says his glory is like the firstling of a bullock. And this animal is remarkable. I'm reading from the Jameson Fawcett and Brown commentary. Is remarkable for courage and fierceness. And you can say that about the British Empire at the time. Now not only were they courageous and fierce, but the word Anglo, and that's who the British are, they're the Anglo Saxons. Now that word Anglo came from a nickname that was given to Ephraim. Now I'll read you from Yar, uh, Yar Divity's uh, article on Agel, the uh, Hebrew word Agel. And uh, of course I interviewed Yar, Yair um, Divity on our, and you can see it on our YouTube channel. We talked about his book, The Tribes that you could purchase off his website. They got, he's got nothing to do with us, but you could purchase his booklets off his website, britam.org, if you want to. But he says this about the Hebrew word eagle. It says, the isles should beware that God will gather in the scattered ones of Israel. Uh, Rachel, the mother of Joseph, will no longer have to weep over the exile of her children, for they will return. Ephraim, is called a bullock or a young bull. And that's in Jeremiah the 31st chapter, verse 18. It says, Surely, I have surely heard Ephraim bemoaning himself. Thus thou hast chastised me, and I was chastised as a bullock. The Hebrew word is eagle, unaccustomed to the yoke. Turn thou me, and I shall be turned, for thou art the Lord my God. Now he says, in Hebrew, the word translated Bullock is Eagle. Historically, the very name Eagle was a nickname, uh, a nickname for the ethnic term Angle. The Angles gave England, i.e., Angleland, its name, together with the Saxons. And the word Saxon comes from Isaac's sons, that of course got corrupted during over time, but be eventually became the Anglo-Saxons. And that was a nickname for Ephraim. Uh, together with the Saxons, Jutes, Vandals, and others, the Angles conquered from the Celts the land that was later named England, or Angleland. The Angles also called Agles. The Appalachian Angle, or Ago, were employed interchangeably. The Hebrew word for young bull is Agle. Rashi was the foremost medieval uh, Jewish commentator in commentating on this verse, that's 3118 of Jeremiah, he states the Hebrew word eagle, young bull, was a name applied to Ephraim. As we saw, this was also another name applied to English. The English now nicknamed themselves John Bull. Since the early 1800s, the figure of John Bull has been used to portray Britain in political cartoons. John Bull paralyzes, uh, parallels Uncle Sam, who represents the USA. And then he goes on to say here, the English Angles were also known as the Eagles. The name Eagle and Angle appear to have been interchangeable. The Hebrew could be 
two alternative ways of pronouncing the same word, for example, the old Ashkenazi European Hebrew for uh, the A-ing letter could have an A-N sound instead of the usual A, thus Yankel was a nickname for someone called Yakov with a Ye in Yakov being pronounced Yan. Similarly, Agel and Ang Angle could originally have been uh, different forms of the Hebrew word Agel. England was named after the Angles. The Angles is another form of Agel, and Agel was a nickname for Ephraim. Agel means young bull. This is an important point. The verse 3118 of Jeremiah is therefore strongly indicating that the English are to be identified with Ephraim. And that's from Yardivity's website, his article on the Angles. So, notice here that Joseph, it says his glory is like the firstling of a bullock, a young bull, an angle. The Anglo-Saxons, of course, they were courageous and fierce. And then his horns are like the horns of a unicorn. This is talking about the strength of Joseph using his horns. And with his strength, those horns, it says he will push. Now, who was, who controlled, who controlled uh, pretty much the world back in the time of British colonization. Well, the British, and they had the power, the power of the Navy, the power of their army. They were the superpower of the world, and they used that power that they had. It says, with them, that's the horns of the unicorn and the bullock, meaning their power. Horns is always a symbol of power. With them, he shall push the peoples together meaning the peoples of Ephraim he shall push together with his strength to the ends of the earth. So he, here he is pushing Ephraim to the ends of the earth with his power. And it says here in the James F. Fawcett and Brown commentary that this means to push together the people is to effect settlement for themselves. So here is the Anglo-Saxons, the British, using their power that they had for settlement to settle the lands to the ends of the earth and one of those lands is here in Canada and Guelph was the headquarters of settlements that took place here in Guelph in Upper Canada this was the headquarters that uh, made uh, huge settlements for British colonization in Upper Canada so Guelph Guelph was a had a huge role in uh, the colonization of Canada by the British people. Another prophecy, Genesis the 49th chapter verse 22, here it talks again about Joseph, and it says here that Joseph is a fruitful bough, even a fruitful bough by a well, whose branches run over the wall. Now the Hebraic translation, the complete Jewish Bible, captures, I believe, the sense of this prophecy, uh, better translating it. It says Joseph is a fruitful plant, a fruitful plant by a spring which branches climb over the wall. Now, uh, Stephen Collins in his article, The Tribe of Joseph in the Latter Days, he writes, Here the tribes of Joseph, here the tribes of Joseph are likened not to a tree which stays in one place, but rather a vine which spreads out and sends branch, branches rather elsewhere. Applying this imagery to the modern nations the modern nations, Joseph's tribes, should be nations which have vined out or spread elsewhere in the world from home base, which is exactly what happened. From Britain, they spread out to the entire world. Uh, this came to pass in the Anglo-Saxon nations. The home base for the tribe of Joseph in the modern world was the British Isles. The tribes of Joseph, indeed, branched out to a new branched out to plant new nations in the United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and part of South Africa. In doing so, they fulfilled the prophecy of Genesis the 49th, 48th chapter, verse 19, that Ephraim would become a great multitude of nations, the British nations, and a single great nation, the United States of America. They also fulfilled the prophecy of Genesis the 49th chapter, verse 22, which indicated the tribe of Joseph would be a colonizing people who had founded new nations by the time of the latter, when the latter days arrived. This has also come to pass. Now notice, 
It also says here, it says that jo it was foretold that Joseph was to be located by a well. Now, some versions of the Bible say by a spring. What is clear, Stephen Collins says, what is clear is that in this prophetic imagery indicates that all the people of Joseph's tribes will dwell by water. All the nations of modern Joseph, the United States, Great Britain, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, are seacoast nations along uh, the water. The British Isles, Australia, New Zealand are island nations completely surrounded by water. The United States and Canada have very extensive sea coasts along the oceans, not to mention all the great lakes that are in Canada and the United States as well. And there's another prophecy that talks about Joseph dwelling in many waters. Uh, it says the prophecy is combined with one below that the nations of Joseph will be made strong by God in the latter days, indicates the nations of Joseph will be a maritime, will be maritime nations and naval powers. The British Navy dominated the oceans for centuries, and the US Navy now is the most powerful fleet on Earth. So it is evident who Canada is in this latter time. They are part of the branches, the vine of Joseph, the branches of Joseph. This is one of the branches of the many nations of Joseph, and Guelph was the headquarters for colonizing, pushing the peoples together to the ends of the earth, colonizing, using the strength of Britain to colonize many of these lands uh, around Guelph and Upper Canada. Get that free booklet, The United States, The British Commonwealth and Prophecy, and that article, The Dominion of Canada, free of charge, off our website, BritishIsrael.ca. This is Peter Salemi saying goodbye, friends, and I'll see you here next time on the Watchman Program.